In this video, traders, we look at the gap and wick trade setup. A nice one, this. Stay tuned. Hey, traders and investors, very warm welcome to you. Okay, so this is the gap and wick trade. I like this setup and let me explain why. It's combining two decent strategies in their own right together to give you a nice, filter and then a trade entry and a quantified risk for the trade which is oh, I love to find in any setup I'll take any setup as long as it's got a good quantified risk and I can put the risk and it's an obvious place for it and the risk reward ratio looks nice I'm, I'm open-minded to all those kind of stuff so let's have a look at it what this is all about so you're going to trade this really in anything that's got a gap in it. So your stocks, US stocks, UK stocks, German stocks, whatever, your cash indices. If you want to trade uh, um, currencies, you're gonna have to wait for any Sunday night gap. But the important thing is it's a gap. So it's probably gonna be better for your stocks uh, or your, your cash indices. So you're looking for something that reprices the market overnight. And that's what causes a gap, right? We have news or something that people will then insinuate contains more value or less value for that specific instrument, which is why we get a gap, you know, close at one price, some news comes out, people think, ah, you know what, it's now worth less because whatever, whether that's global news, or the futures have moved, whatever, it doesn't really matter. The point is now the opening print is below the close, we've got a gap lower. So we have to have that scenario, the price gaps up or down. In this example, I'm gonna use a gap down, which is gonna flip everything on its head if we're talking about a gap up, and we're gonna go short instead of long. So we have a gap down. Um, the bigger the gap, the better, because nice big gaps generally mean that everyone's looking at a lot of supply demand imbalance. Anything we, anytime we get a supply demand imbalance as traders, we want to be on it because that's when the opportunity presents itself uh, for us. So we get a gap down and we get an open. Now I'm just mirroring that's the closed price there. Um, whatever that may be, whatever stock we're looking at, we get an open. Now we get the first five minutes. This is a five minute chart, by the way. Okay, it works best on a five minute because we wanna get want to get early enough on it that we don't miss the move. We don't want it too tight that we get involved in noise. Five is a nice sweet spot for it. We get a first candle. Don't necessarily have to the first candle. The first candle could be kind of a green candle. It, the point is we're looking for it to attempt to fill this gap. So you might get a green candle, might get two green candles, depending on how big the gap is, you might not get a green candle at all. The point is, guys, is we're looking for this little beauty here this one here, this wick to the upside. In other words, price starts to fill that gap. Price starts to push up and everyone starts to pile on board thinking this thing's gonna gap fill because it's the most textbook trade out there, right? Prices fill gaps. So what do people do? They go long, they pile on, it starts to push up higher. They think, great, it's working. But then in that five minute window, something happens. Supply demand just goes bang, straight from demand to supply shifts down, starts to fall down, starts to close at lows. But the most important feature of the candlestick that we're looking for is this puppy right here, guys, this wick to the upside, because that is on a five minute candle showing us that there's a significant change in sentiment in that five minute period. And the longer that candle, the better. The bigger range on that candle, the better. But just think in terms of people who are trapped in this. Now, this is why it works so beautifully. People have bought for that gap fill. People are in early on for the gap fill. People are seeing it going. People are chasing up here, buying, buying, buying for the gap fill thing. It's a done deal. It's been pushing up. We're not far away from the close. We're going to fill the gap. It's a nice, easy trade for them. I'm going to take it. And of course, whatever for whatever reason, sentiment changes. Big sellers come in. Institutions start dumping it. Don't like what's happened. Whatever it may be, the point is we now get more aggressive selling coming in drives that down, causes that large range and the wick. In other words, within the five minutes, we print a high, but actually we close right at lows. That's your cue to say, thank you very much. I know a ton of people who are trapped on this, who have been expecting the gap fill, who have been purely trading it for the gap fill because that's why they're involved in it. My majority of people are trading for that. Sure, some are gonna trade it for a multi-day move to highs, whatever, but there's a lot of traders who are in that just for that gap fill strategy. And when that doesn't work, they're gonna be out the door like a rocket. And thank you very much. Their dumping of positions is gonna help you make your profit because you are already going to be short as we start to come back through this low here, breaking through the low. If you're brave, you can take it on the close of the candle right here, wherever that may be, and just use that candle to frame the trade. The important thing is your stop is gonna be above that high. However you frame the entry, I think you can be a little bit clever with that, but the stop is gonna be above that high. And now you're looking for a cascade lower as everyone who was playing for the gap trade 
comes out the door. And of course, don't forget the initial sellers who caused this wick are still hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, and dumping probably large amounts of stock for whatever reason. So you're trading the direction of the break opposite to the wick, just to confirm. So the wick is the upside, we're trading on the short side. So the gap that fills doesn't fill the upside, the wick forms on the high of the candle, we're trading short because we're trading against that gap fill. If we were looking for a gap higher and we kind of push to fill the gap lower, push to fill the gap, we didn't, we've got the width to the downside, we're looking to go long. So we're fading the gap fill trade. Everyone's on the gap fill, everyone's wrong as it appears in this five minute chart. Hey, it might fill the gap later on, but this is a real nice short term kind of trade. And often this will yield multi, multi, multi candle, long term move in the day. You get a nice trending move and you'll find, look back. In fact, you can go through charts and look back many times. That's kind of the high of the day because everyone's got sucked in on it. Looks quite nice. All looks great. First 10 minutes, first 15 minutes. They get aggressive. They get caught out. So you get the double whammy of them getting caught out, having to liquidate and the actual bigger move of everyone dumping whatever it is, stock or futures contracts into that causing a nice cascade lower. But look for that wick, guys. Look for that close. Look for that gap. The gap and wick trade, nice combination. Blend them together, you get a powerful trading strategy. All right, thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't yet already for more of this kind of stuff, psychology, discipline, all those things that we need to make us better traders. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.